Hello everyone, welcome to my new series, Topaz Tuesday. This is Gary D. Tynecourt from MoreThanASnapshot.com and I'm going to try to introduce you to a new plugin or a new feature from Topaz every Tuesday. In today's Topaz Tuesday, which oddly enough never comes out on Tuesday, is all about Sharpen AI and some of the new features that they've added. I think you're really going to like them and you really should check them out for yourself. If you already own the software, all you have to do is update it. It's free. And if you don't own it, check out the links in the description where I have affiliate links that will take you right to the information about the software. They have two sales going on right now. One of them is for Sharpen AI. It's $20 off until August 7th. And the other one is for a larger bundle of their AI plugins. And that's an even better deal. Not only that, if you use my coupon code SNAPSHOT, you'll get 15% off in addition to that sale price. So let's head over to the software and check it out right now. I've loaded in several different images that we can check out so that I can show you the two main new features we're talking about in Sharpen AI 2.1. First of all, when we come over to the right panel, we always had the Sharpen, Stabilize, and Focus options. You had to manually choose which one of these three was going to be the best for the image that you were working with. Some images worked better on Sharpen, some images worked better on Stabilize, etc. And I've done plenty of videos showing how well this software works, so if you really are interested in seeing that, go back and look at some past Topaz Tuesdays to see how well Sharpen AI works. But the new feature they've added is that if you look over here at this little lightning bolt, if you click this on, it will analyze the image and it will pick the best mode for that image. You don't have to go and waste time looking at all three to try to figure out what will work best for that image. So that's a nice little time saver. Not only that, underneath it has an auto setting for this um, to set the automatic settings for the amount of sharpening and noise reduction. And it is much improved over the last version. But of course, if you don't agree with what it's done, you can always make another adjustment yourself just by moving the slider, and that automatically turns off auto. Now, you'll notice we're not seeing anything happen here, and that's because I have auto update turned off. And in order to see something happen, I have to click the update button and then it will generate the pre preview. And it does take a few seconds for this to happen, which is why I had auto update turned off. Okay, now it is finished. We can look at the before and the after for that adjustment. Now, if you want to, you can turn on auto update and it'll do it every time you move a slider. The only problem is sometimes that wastes a lot of time because you might make you might make several adjustments to these sliders and it's going to try to update every single time. So it, it kind of saves time to just wait till you're done making the adjustments you think are going to work and then hit the update button. That would be my suggestion anyway. I'll choose a different image and click the auto button. And now you'll see it analyze this image differently. It chose focus instead of stabilize. Let's go down to another one. And I'll try this one. This one it chose Stabilize. In this case, it chose Sharpen. You just have to remember if you're going to do a batch, you have to go through them one at a time and turn on these settings. And it will choose a different option for each image that's customized to that image. So that's one big update that they have. Now, let's look at the next big update. When we go back to the first image, there's a button here called masking. Now, when they first came out with this software, the first version that I reviewed, they had no masking at all. But you could use this software as a plugin to Photoshop, so you could have it, you know, sharpen the whole image, and then you could use Photoshop to create masks, and you can still do it that way. But then in a later version, they added masking, but the masking was all totally manual. You had to paint in the masking wherever you wanted it to be. And that was just a little bit time-consuming, but it was fine. 
And now they've taken it one step further. The, the new function that they've added is AI masking. So you can see if I click masking, down here in the bottom left, they give you some new tools. First of all, you have edge aware for when you're creating your mask. That edge aware will help you to, to stay within the lines if you're going to paint it manually. And you can use the add to add to your selection, or you can use the black, the subtract from your masking. Now, where it gets interesting is this little thing here that says find objects. The AI will recognize about 20 different objects and it will automatically mask your items for you, which saves a lot of time. Now this works to varying degrees. Sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't work very well at all. So let's play a little game called Will It Mask That? So I have a whole bunch of images here and we'll see if Topaz will mask that. So in this case, all you have to do is click on this little button and then it says it recognizes this as a potted plant. Now it's not exactly a potted plant, but it is a plant. So let's see how it does. If I click on potted plant, you can see here it attempts to mask it. And it didn't do a perfect job. It has, you know, parts of it masked correctly and parts that it, it didn't mask. Now, like I said, you can use the add button and just paint over all the areas that it missed. And you can get it to mask out just the part that you want to sharpen. Because in most cases, you don't want to sharpen a whole image. You just want to sharpen the important parts of the image. Now, I'm not going to waste my time doing this whole thing. But you can see here, if I brush over this stuff, it will add to the mask. All right. So with the flower, it did the so-so halfway decent job. Let's remove that mask and we'll go on to the next one. The next one we have rocks. Now this is not likely something that they would have as an object, but let's give it a shot. When it doesn't find it, it'll tell you no subjects found. So if you wanted to mask this, you would have to do it manually with the paintbrush, which is fine, just takes a little bit longer. All right, let's try the next one. Will it mask that? Now a waterfall I don't believe is one that it will find, but here we go it's not a subject that it will find so we'll remove the mask and try another one all right here we have an owl hopefully it can find a bird yes it did find a bird and it did a pretty good job it seems to do a pretty good job with birds you'd have a little bit to clean up here in the corner and a little bit of maybe on the log but that's not bad at all All right, here we have a lion, and this one should be interesting. Will it mask that? All right, it, it thinks it could be a sheep or a cat. It's probably closest to the cat, so we'll choose that. All right, and it didn't do a great job, but it did get some of it. And again, you'd have to go in here and manually add the masking. Like I said, some subjects work better than others. Now here's a train, and I believe it will do trains. Yes, it found two things in this picture, a train and a person. And on this one, it did an excellent job on both the train and the person. Here we have a bird. And it did a really good job on the bird. You just have to clean up some of the parts of the bird that it did that it missed because of the uh, probably because of the branch. And I can do this real rough and dirty, and that edge of weir, you know, should find the edge of the bird pretty good. All right, here we have a person. And it seems to do a really great job with people. Here I have a deer. I'll try to zoom out so you can see it a little bit. It probably won't know a deer, but it thinks it might be a sheep. And it actually did a pretty good job, even though it thinks it's a sheep. All I have to do is just fix some of the legs that were obscured by the grass here. 
and I have it, you know, done pretty well. The next one is two deer. So this one would be even more complicated for the software to handle. And it thinks this one is a dog. We'll give it a shot. And it didn't do a very good job with this one. It's got a little bit on the top and on the bottom, but you would really have to do this one manually. All right, here we have a butterfly. Will it mask that? It thinks it's a bird, and it didn't get very much of it, but the butterfly is not very big, so it wouldn't take very long to go around and mask this in completely. And I believe this is the last one that I have, and it's a leaf. And a leaf came out as a bird. And it really did a terrible job on that one. But it's understandable that it doesn't know what a leaf is. All right. So in conclusion, as we went through a variety of subjects, the auto masking was a nice feature to have because when it found the subject, it really saves you a lot of time. And it worked great with trains and people and birds. And those were, you know, three of the top things that it was supposed to be able to do. So I'm sure the rest of the 20 things that it should be able to do, it, was, it would do a great job, too. All right, I hope you found that Topaz Tuesday to be informative. And I really think you should check out this software. Topaz plugins are awesome. And don't forget to check out the affiliate links down below. You can save an additional 15% by using the code SNAPSHOT. All right, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to post your comments and questions and remember to like the video and turn on the little bell notification so that you're notified the next time I upload a Topaz Tuesday or any other video.